Hey everyone, uh, this is Kilo India 5, India Juliet Bravo, and I uh, just want to give you guys a quick video of my um, HOA proof <laughs> uh, HF antenna setup. Um, so here's the house, if you can see it. Um, nothing really stands out, right? Two big trees. Doesn't see, no big verticals, no hex beams, um, nothing like that, no big dipole strung up. Um, but I have an antenna that I've made uh, well over 100 uh, contacts on FT8 in the last uh, 15 days, <laughs> something like that. So you kind of see there, I keep pointing at it, camera, but it's hard to see, right there. Oh, focus, right there, see that, that little tiny wire. So that is a 14 gauge uh, thin wire, uh, multi-strand wire from you know uh, either Home Vapor or or Lowe's, I can't remember now, um, with some fishing line at the end, and I have this end terminated in a little loop with some zip ties, and I duct taped a rock to the end of the fishing line, and threw it over the tallest branch I could find, and hoisted it up this way, and this end of the wire goes all the way up, uh, sure if we're see actually I lost the wire it's, uh, it's hard to see um, it goes up somewhere I think about right there and then see it comes all the way down comes all the way over to this tree goes through this tree comes over to this post our porch and comes to this that's a nine to one uh, ball and nine to one transformer um, because this is a "Quote unquote random wire antenna. Um, it's end fed half wave, but uh, it's about uh, I think 53 or 56 feet long. There's a big um, uh, uh, you know group of numbers. There's a what do you call it? Um, a table. You know, like a spreadsheet you can look at online um, to see what to what bands you want to uh, to be resonant on. And uh, I cut it for something like 56 56 feet." Um, and, uh, you know, the only issue with this kind of intent, well, there's a couple, but with this one, um, you have to make sure that you have a one-to-one -one current choke on um, your coax, because your coax will act kind of like the other end of a dipole in this, in the, in this instance. So um, you might get some RF in the shack if you don't put a one-to-one -one current ball in. Um, I guess it's un in at that point on that, so you want to make sure you do that. But as you can see, this is very... Um, professionally installed with zip ties and uh, this is all kind of temporary at this point but uh, the coax this is about 50 feet of coax runs to this little box that I put together um, so this is one of those Comet um, window pass-throughs that I'll link in the description um, but I just cut a hole in this little box I got from Amazon and then this has my ferrite in there my ferrite core I just drilled a hole in the side for the uh, the comet pass through. Close that, and uh, that way it's you know as waterproof as I can make it. And um, it goes in here into the office. You can see everything um, to my radio. This is the setup here at the desk. Um, like I said, that comet pass through comes in right there. Um, another length, I think it's about 15 feet or 12 feet of coax from that to my uh, Zygu, Zygu uh, G90. Um, and this is hooked up for, for digital modes right now, so it has the little um, CE12, or no, sorry, CE19, I think, uh, breakout board um, behind there. And uh, this is the cat control going to my USB. Um, on my desktop, which is right here. Um, and then this is actually powered off of an old computer power supply with a 12 volt breakout board um, because I am chronically cheap and um, if I have something useful seeing around I don't want to go and buy a whole new set of um, hardware if I don't need it so anyway here's my FT8 um, setup this is a you know FL rig with um, WSJTX and um, grid tracker and 
and uh, let me see, just to show you that this actually, this Nana does work. Go to, I think it's custom filter three. There we go. This is so this is sorting by all FT8 contacts. Um, I have used this antenna with single sideband, but um, kind of doing work from home setups right now. Um, it's a little bit easier just to jump on FT8. But uh, here you go. Like so, 105 QSOs. Uh, that's a little strange. I'm not sure why there's more confirmed. Okay, something's going. Something's funny with this. Don't mind that. But look at the total number of QSOs. We'll go over here and um, let's see. Last page. Let's see. 105. Okay. Yeah, so 105 since um, the 7th of December. And this is the currently it's the 21st of December. Um, so that's a lot of contacts. And you can see here, you know, um, 40 meters, 20 meters. Um, I have some all sorts of different um, frequencies. And, and like I said before, this is a, a quote-unquote random wire. It's not really random. Um, so there's, a, there's formulas you can use to figure out which... Um, which lengths are our best, um, like this here. So you can see you pick what frequencies you want, what bands you want to use. Um, of course, the best one is a longer wire. Um, but uh, I, I picked this one because it's the second best, and I just don't have room for a 124 and a half <laughs> foot long um, antenna in my front yard. Um, they're decent sized lots, but I need to use my trees. Unfortunately, I tried getting up on the roof, and um, <laughs> I don't want to do that again. That was not fun. So, uh, yeah, I just used a 53-foot. I think it, earlier I said 56, but it's it's somewhere in there. And <clears throat> I need to tune it still. I need to, I need to trim a little bit because it's uh, it's not that great on, um, I believe it's f either 15 or 17 meters. Um, it's just brushing up on, like, three, almost 3.0 SWR. And that should be much lower. Um, but so far, it's been great. And, uh, you know, I'm in OHOA and no one's said anything. <laughs> and I've had dipoles in the front. I've had um, all sorts of antennas, uh, verticals, um, thrown up in the trees with magnet wire. And so far, um, this one has been working the best. And actually, let me show you um, kind of another... Um, sign that actually is this is functional let's go to psk reporter so so the last yeah why not three hours right so i think this should already be pulled up but i want to make sure so this is a great way to see how efficient your antennas are um and as you can see mine mine is working um so as the house faces directly in front of us is north, um, almost dead on, and, you know, minus the south, and, and so on and so forth. And so, as you'd imagine, we have a lot of contacts in this direction, especially because that piece here, wire going up, is at, a, is at an angle. And so that changes the takeoff angle of, of the signals coming in and coming out. I guess coming in, really. Um, no, excuse me, going out. Um, but, uh... So there is a bit of a null here. Now I have made contacts in, to Mexico. Um, I think there was a, a guy over here and a guy guy over here, but I haven't really gone in like central Mexico or southern Mexico. Um, I've made one contact in Cuba. I have made just this morning. Um, I made a contact in Fiji, which is pretty crazy, um, and that was like 6,800 miles. And my G90 here only runs, you know, 20 watts uh, max, and I can't remember what it was set to. I think something like 20. I usually run almost the, the full amount because these these can these can handle it, um, and it's not a ton of power anyway. It's not like I'm running one and a half kilowatts or anything too crazy. Um, but you can see I've been heard with this little antenna up in uh, in Europe, um, into Russia, and even Asiatic Russia, Japan. Um, I see a lot of um, people calling CQ in Singapore. Um, a few in Australia. Um, I had mainland China uh, a few days ago, which was pretty cool. Obviously, I couldn't talk to them, but I could at least hear them, which was which was fun. Um, and you look over here, and this is set for uh, I believe 20 meter. Yeah, 20 meters right now. You can see, uh, you know, Puerto Rico, that kind of thing. But anyway, I just want to show you guys that this does in fact work, 
and you can set up an antenna in an HOA and uh, get on the air. So uh, 73s and uh, it's KI5IJB and see you guys out there.